Hi, this is Denver Riddle with you here. As promised in the previous tutorial, I'm now going to share with you how to grade raw cinema DNG from the Blackmagic camera to get pleasing results. I'll be sharing with you three different approaches and I'll be doing it all in under 10 minutes. So feel free to follow along and see which approach works best for you. To gain access to the footage I'll be working with from the short film Ascend, just sign up below by filling out the form. Now the three approaches for grading RAW are using the Camera RAW Editor, using a LUT, and just grading from scratch. Let's first take a look at using the Camera RAW Editor. We'll find the Camera RAW Editor by clicking on the camera icon. From here, we can choose how to interpret the RAW data. There are four main decode settings that we can choose from. We can decode using the Cinema DNG default, the camera metadata, which were the settings chosen during the shoot, by project, which are set at the project settings level, and by clip, which will then allow us to make changes right here in this clip. So let's take a look at how we can fix it by changing the color space and gamma from BMD film, which is log exposure, to Rec 709. And BAM! We've instantly added contrast and saturation now that the raw data is being decoded into a Rec 709 color space. From here, we can toy around with the gamma to get different results. By the way, the P3 color space is for monitoring and delivering to digital cinema projection, so it's not going to display correctly on our RGB monitor, so we'll just stick with Rec 709. Continuing on, we can adjust the white balance or color temperature. We can choose as shot, which was the white balance chosen on set, choose from a list of presets, or choose custom, which will then allow us to manually set the color temperature in Kelvin. Moving it to the left cools it down, and to the right warms it up. It's considered balanced when the color channels are even going across the top. While I'm here, let me switch to the vector scope, and then with the tint control, we can fine tune the color temperature either to the left to add green, or to the right to add magenta. We'll just try to center the trace to the middle of the vector scope. Lastly, we can either increase or decrease the exposure. In this case, we'll increase the exposure to bring up the skin tones. And you'll notice that washed out our highlights. We can verify that by going to the waveform. But if I go to the three-way, and then pull back on the gain control, you can see that none of the detail was clipped. This is the advantage of working in 32-bit floating point. As a final step, we'll increase the saturation a little. And voila! We have a nice suitable image that we've graded using the RAW camera editor. Let's take a look at what we had before. Much improved. Now, if we find that we like these settings, or just the fact that we'd like to go with Rec 709 color space, we can apply these settings globally by going to the project settings page, this gear icon here, and then to the camera raw section. Here we can then change the color space and gamma to Rec 709. When we click apply, those settings will be applied to all the clips in our project. Now let's take a look at the second approach to grading raw with a LUT. I personally think we can get better results and better retention of detail in the highlights by decoding as BMD film and then applying a LUT that Blackmagic has provided. Now in order for this to work, we'll first need to change the color space to BMD film or log exposure because this is what the LUT was intended for. So in our next example, where a lot of the detail is blown out in Rec 709, I'll set the decode using to clip. And now we'll change the color space to BMD Film. Now you'll immediately see we're seeing more detail in the highlights, whereas before in Rec 709, we're losing detail in these lines here as well as in the texture in the brick. Now we can still pull back detail using the gain control, but it's not going to look as good as when we decode with BMD Film. So in BMD Film, we're getting tons of dynamic range, but we're stuck with an image that's underexposed and really flat. So to address this, we'll apply a LUT. To do that, we'll right click on the node, go to 3D, then Blackmagic Cinema Camera to Rec 709. And presto! It's immediately looking better and we can apply color correction like we normally would. Give me just a moment to balance the exposure. And finish up by adding a little saturation. Now let's compare with how it looked when it was decoded straight to Rec 709. 
Comparing and contrasting the two, you can see we're getting much better results decoding as BMD film and then applying a Rec. 709 LUT. For speed and efficiency, if we wanted to apply the same workflow to the other clips in our project, we'd again go to the project settings page, change the decode using back to BMD film, and then going to the lookup table section, we'll apply the Blackmagic camera to Rec. 709 LUT as a 3D input LUT. There, our same settings are applied. Let me turn off that input LUT before moving on. All right, and for our third and final approach, we can grade BMD film or log exposure completely from scratch. Though this will take more time, I think you'll be pleased with the results. Okay, so going to the log grader in the color wheels palette, with the master offset control, we'll bring up the entire tonal range centering the exposure. Then with the contrast control, we'll expand the contrast and use the pivot control to fine tune our pivot point. Then we'll lower the shadows until they begin to touch the bottom of the scope. Bring up the midtones a little bit. And finally, to get more detail out of the highlights, we'll raise them up and adjust the high range a little to expand the contrast in the clouds. Now we're still not there yet because while we now have contrast, our image still looks really washed out for lack of saturation. So in a new node, I'm going to share with you a really ingenious way of applying saturation with less crosstalk in the color channels. In other words, we can get better results using the method I'm going to share with you than you would by simply adding saturation with the saturation control. So going to the RGB mixer, we'll boost the output in each of the red, green, and blue channels to their maximum value. Now we're getting a really nice color rendition. Most of the time, this will be enough, but if we needed to add even more saturation, we can do that by adding another node and repeating the same procedure. Now it looks like we've gone too far, so to dial it back, going to the King menu, we can effectively dial it back to taste by adjusting the output gain control. Essentially what this is doing is reducing the opacity. Now let's take a look at the entire before and after. Like I said, blazing results. Also, when you sign up below, as an added bonus, I'm going to share with you a tutorial on how we can take the same image and apply an HDR grading technique so that we're getting all this rich detail in the sky. Grading from scratch does take the longest, but when done correctly, I believe it yields the best results. As a final note, if you're wondering about grading ProRes captured as BMD film, the last two approaches would apply. Namely, you could apply a LUT or grade the log exposure from scratch. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you'll like it or leave a comment. In the next tutorial, I'll share with you how we can create a film look for the Blackmagic camera using some free film LUTs that I'll provide. So be sure to stay tuned and thank you for watching.